Hi, welcome back to our model drawing lesson again on Premise 6. Okay, now today we are going to look at whether are we, uh, are we going to draw parts whole or comparison model, so which is a better kind of model to draw. Alright, so let's look at example 1 and then you think, alright, you think about what kind of model is best suitable to draw this problem. Now, Sherry and Leah went shopping together with a total sum of $3 to $4. Alright, so you have two person. Alright, and uh, Sherry spent twice, twice as much as Leah. And the money Leah had left was $27 more than what she had spent. And then Leah had twice as much alright, Leah has twice as much money left as Shireen. So how much money did Leah spend? And how much money did Sherry have at first? Alright, so what kind of model is most suitable to help us to solve this problem? Now it is comparison model. Because you have two person, alright, and you have the more than Alright, you have the more than and you have the twice as much, so you are comparing two percent. So, so when you look at the problem uh, in your exam, uh, you think whether what kind of model, is it parts whole or is it comparison? Because the model that you choose to draw will either affect how you draw. <laughs> Alright, if you choose the wrong type of model, uh, you find that later on you get hard, or it gets hard to continue drawing, and then you have to erase and then draw the other type of model, which is uh, comparison model, right? So, so think carefully, right? When you look at a problem, you need to think, all right, what kind of model do I draw? Comparison or parts whole? All right, so in the next coming few lesson, uh, you will, you will see Mr. Ong, like, you will, you will think, you will look at how Mr. Ong use, all right, what kind of model do I use to solve different kinds of problem? Is it parts whole comparison? All right, so over here, uh, let's draw out the comparison. Now, so Sherry and Leah went together, uh, went shopping together with a total sum of three to four dollars. Now, if you find that uh, you don't quite know how to draw the first sentence, then you jump and skip to the <laughs> next one. All right, Sherry spent twice as much as Leah. All right, I think we can draw that already. So you draw a rectangle for Sherry, and then uh, you have a shorter rectangle for Leah. And by the way, do I know who has more money? Uh, we are not sure. The question never really says who has more money at first, so you assume, all right? You can make assumption. All right, I think, all right, I think Sherry has more money. So then we just draw a longer rectangle, right? So what happened if your guess is wrong? Don't worry. As long as you label your numbers, lab label your model, and your model is uh is uh properly drawn, right? Not anyhow draw, you can still solve it, even though your guess may be wrong. So I guess maybe Sherry has more money. All right, so let's see whether is it correct later on. All right, so Sherry and Leah has, oh, they went shopping with a total of three to four dollars. Ah, I think we can draw the first sentence. <laughs> right, actually you can draw the first sentence. Then Sherry spent twice as much, so you just cut twice, means two boxes, right? And Leah spent one time, or one box, okay? And label, right? It's always good and important to label your model so that, uh, so that you draw out the problem. What is drawing out the problem? It means that you put the whole problem onto your drawing so that you don't need to read the problem, right? If you were to teach somebody how to solve a problem, the person just have to look at your model without even have to read the question. <laughs> That's how good your model is, right? If you want to teach somebody how to solve, you just show the model to the person and the person look at the model, oh, I can do already. <laughs> Okay, that is that is the effectiveness of the model. But if the person look at your model and and confuse, right, doesn't know how to continue, your model is not clear, right? You need to make it clearer. All right, so where's the leftover? The leftover is over here. All right, so so this is the leftover. All right, now so where are we now? We are drawn until here. Now the amount Leah had left was twenty four dollars more than what she had spent. Now in the earlier lesson, how do you draw this sentence? The person with lesser money, or the person who spend lesser, right? Okay, or the person, or the or the money that's lesser. Okay, the lesser. So which is lesser? The money Leah had left means the leftover money was more than what she spent. So what she spent is the lesser group. So the lesser group, you what do you do? You right, you will have lesser money, right? So you have to minus twenty seven dollars. So you look at how much Leah has spent. Leah spent one unit. Right, one unit. Right? So if I put down here, Leah spent one unit, right? Because that's what the model says. And then the money she had left was twenty seven more than one unit. So which means that the leftover is one unit and twenty seven dollars. Correct?
and then you put that in your model. So Leo had one unit and twenty-seven dollars more left. Okay, so you are done drawn until here. Now she had twice, so Leo had twice as much money left as Sherry. All right, so how do you put twice? Can you cut into two boxes for twice? But cannot because why? You can see that this is the money Leo had left. There's something in the box already. You can't cut into half, which is you can't cut into two boxes. So whatever you can't cut, don't worry. You can just put, uh, <coughs> you can put a third representation two times, right? And then Sherry will have one time left. <coughs> okay, <coughs> so Sherry will have one time left, which I put down over here. So you have two times, <coughs> and then you have one time. So how much money did Leo spend? So your question mark is over here, and how much did Sherry have at first? Uh, so if you don't want to clutter the drawing, you can put the question mark at the side. Right? If you don't want to clutter the drawing, all right? Okay, or if you you can also put your question mark here, which is usually what you are supposed to do. All right? Okay. If you put there, then let's erase this drawing. <coughs> all right. Now the model is done. All right. Our model is completed. So if your model is good. Right? How do you teach? How do you teach your child? Right? If you, if you're a parent who is watching the video, how do you how do you teach your child who doesn't know how to solve the problem? Show the model to your child, and then let them look at the model. Right? For a, for a good start, let them look at the model and see whether they can interpret your model. All right. So how do you interpret the model? Your two times is one unit and twenty seven. So this is how your child should interpret. All right. Two time, then. Sherry had one time left, right? All right. Sherry has one time left. So how much is one time? Then you must divide by two, because if two times is one unit and twenty-seven, then one time will be one divided by two. That will be half unit, and then twenty-seven divided by two, right? What is twenty-seven divided by two? That will be thirteen dollar and fifty cents. And you put that onto your model. So this is uh half unit plus. Thirteen dollar and fifty cents, right? And then what do you think is the next step? The next step should be to add all of them together, right? Add Sherry's money and Leah's money, and that gives you the total. So Sherry has half unit plus. Okay, or let me let me just write over here, all right, so that we have more space. So Sherry has half unit plus thirteen dollar fifty cents, and then plus the two units that are spent, and then plus again Leah has. One unit and twenty-seven dollar, and Leo spent one unit. So you add all their money together at first, and that will give you the total, which is three hundred and twenty-four dollars. And now you add up all the units, right? All the units. So how many units are there all together? So there will be four and a half units. So four and a half unit plus thirteen dollar and fifty cents. That will give you three hundred and Twenty-four dollars. So how much is four and a half unit? So you minus. You take three to four minus thirteen point five, and you get three hundred and ten dollars and fifty cents. So how much is one unit? You divide by right. You divide. So you take three one zero point five zero and divide by four and a half, and you will get sixty-nine dollars. So your one unit is sixty-nine dollars. Correct. And then you can find the question mark. So how much did Leo? Uh, how much did Leo spend? Leo spent one unit, which is sixty-nine dollars. And then how much money did Sherry have at first? Uh, so you, you take half unit plus thirteen point five plus two unit. Okay. All right. So so Leo. Uh, so Sherry has how much altogether at first? So let's add half unit. Right. Half unit plus this two unit. That will be two and a half unit. So how much is that? You take sixty nine times two and a half, and you get one seven two point five zero. All right. So let's put down one seven two point five zero, and don't forget to plus right to plus thirteen dollar fifty cent. Right. That is also part of Sherry's money. So you plus thirteen dollars and fifty cents. So how much does Sherry have at first? Okay, and your answer is hundred and eighty-six dollar at first. So Sherry has one eight six dollar at first. Okay, 
right? Now, if you want to check whether your answer is correct, you can also check. How do you check? Now, uh, it's always good to check by finding Leah's money. So Leah has one unit plus 27 plus one unit. So you take one unit, which is 69, all right? 69, and then you times two, because there are two units, right? So you times two, you get 138, and then you plus 27. Okay, so Leah has one six five dollars. Am I correct? And then you take the total 324 minus 165. 324 minus 165 and oh you get 159. 324 minus 165 and uh, what do you get? 324 minus oh so 324 minus 165 and you get 159. Ah so this is a very good example. <laughs> Right, we, we have the answer wrong. So what do we do? So it's time to check. All right, check your steps. Okay, so let's check. All right, so this is the part where all of us we don't like. All right, when you check and then you realize that something is something is wrong. Okay, so this is how you check. So it's a good opportunity to show you that uh, when you got the answer wrong, or when you check your answer and you got the answer wrong, then what must you do? Then start from the beginning and. <laughs> and really find the mistake, all right? Start from the beginning and find the mistake. So let's find the mistake, all right? Now, so let's, first of all, let's redraw the model. Look at the model. Now, Sherry and Leo went shopping with a total sum of three to four. So, correct. Sherry spent twice, twice as much. So you have twice, okay? So you have correct. Okay, so this part, correct. And then Leo spent one time, correct. Okay, and the money Leo had left was 27 more, more than what she spent, right? So it means that Leah had one unit plus $27 left, correct? Because she has 27 left, 27 more than what she spent. All right, so correct. And then she had twice as much left as Sherry. So which means that uh, Leah has two times left and Sherry has one time left. And if you look at the model, you can see that the rectangles don't look proportional. Leah has <laughs> the box, the, you can see the box that Leah has left is shorter and Sherry has like a longer box, right? Uh, but it doesn't matter, okay? Because as long as you label, right, you, you can still solve the problem. So uh, Leah had twice as much left, that is two times, that's why you have this, two times, and then Sherry will have one time left. Okay, so how much money did Leah spend? So your question mark, which is correct, and then how much money did Sherry have at first, which is also correct. So the model is correct, everything is correct. Okay, then let's look at the steps. All right, now if two time is one unit plus 27, correct? And then your one time will be divided by two. So one unit divided by two is half unit, 27 divided by two is $13.50. So correct, all right? So you put that into your model. So Sherry has half unit, and thirteen dollar fifty cent left, which is correct, right in the model. All right. Then what do you do next? You add up all their money together. So you add uh half unit. All right. So Sherry has half unit, which is here, plus thirteen dollar fifty cent plus two unit. All right. That is Sherry's money at first, and then you plus one unit plus twenty seven and plus one unit. That is Leah's money at first. And that will give you total money three to four. So correct. Seems like everything is most of it. Most of the steps are correct. Okay. Then what do you do next? You add up all the units. So half plus uh, okay two unit plus one unit three unit four unit four unit plus half unit is four and a half unit. Oh, Mr. Wong saw the mistake already. <laughs> all right. Thirteen dollar fifty cent plus twenty seven dollars. So we did not add twenty seven dollars. So that was the mistake. Okay, so that is a, this is a very good example, all right? When you check and your answer is wrong, what do you do? You have to find the mistake. So we forgot to take 13.50 plus 30 to $27. So which means that you take 13.5 and you plus 27, that is $40.50, okay? $40.50. And then can you find what is one and a half you need? Then you take 3 to 4 and you minus $40.50 and you get $283.50, right? And then you can find one unit. So you divide by 4.5 and your one unit is $63. Ah, so now you can see the correct steps already. 
And then, can you find what is uh, what is what? Can you find uh, what do you want to find? You want to find. By the way, this is this is Lear spend one unit, which is sixty three dollars. So you got your answer for part A, sixty three dollars. So now, can you find how much Sherry have at first? So you take half unit plus two unit. That's how you get two and a half units. So you take sixty three, which is one unit times two and a half. That will be one seven or one five seven point five zero. Okay, so let's put down one five seven point five zero, and then don't forget to do what. Don't forget to plus plus what, plus the thirteen dollar fifty cents that Sherry has also. So you add them together. All right, so one five seven point five zero plus thirteen point five zero, and you get one seven one. So Sherry has how much money at first? One seven one. Okay. So if Sherry has one seven one, then how do we check whether is the answer correct? Can you find Leah's money? So Leah has one unit, which is sixty three dollars. Then you times two because there are two units. So sixty three times two, and then plus twenty seven. And you get one five three, right? So Leo has one five three. All right. Now, if you add these two persons' money together, do you get the total three two four? Let's add together, and your answer is correct. You get three two four. So when you add these two persons, you get the right total. So your answer <laughs> is now correct. Okay. So how much did uh the Sherry? How much did Leo spend? So Leo spend. Sixty-three dollars. All right. See, they have spent sixty-three dollars. And how much did Sherry have at first? Sherry has one seven one dollars at first. Okay, got it. Right. So you can see that. Uh, right. This is not. Uh, this is a mistake that Mr. Tong has made. Uh, but it's a good lesson here. Why is a good lesson? Uh, it's to show you. That when you after you got your answer ready and there's time, you check your answer and you find that oh the answer is not the same, then what do you do? Then you have to start from the beginning, right? From the model drawing all the way down to the steps to see whether can you find the careless mistake. Usually when I mark the papers, uh, students students will tell me oh I I I make this mistake I make that mistake, but if they would have checked the answer, right? How to check? Like how I checked just now, they would have avoided the careless mistake, right? If they would have gone through all the steps thoroughly, they might be able to find the mistake, and that's how you don't lose your marks. Okay, all right. So this is example one. So and you can see that oh, we have wasted about <laughs> not really wasted. Okay, we have spent about eighteen minutes right on this problem. So now let's quickly go to example two. All right. Okay. Now, now we are at example two. Emily bought some cups and plates. She bought two more plates than cups. However, she paid twenty five dollar twenty cent less for the plates than for the cups. Each cup cost two dollar more than one plate. One plate cost two dollar forty cents. How many cups did Emily buy? What was the what was the total right total cost of the plates? Then you tell me, Tong. Can I use guess and check? Uh, yes, you can. All right, but try not to use guess and check unless you really, really don't know how to do. All right, because guess and check takes quite a while, a long while. All right. So what's the method here? Model drawing. Okay. Why? Because you see the word more than. So let's draw out the first sentence. Now Emily bought some cups and plates, so we can't draw the sentence, but we know that she bought two more plates than cups. So you draw two more plates than cups. Okay. And then she paid twenty five dollar twenty cent less for the plates than for the cups. So the cups are more, all right, more expensive, right? So she, right, she paid, uh, she paid twenty five dollar twenty cent less for the, for the plates than for the cups. All right. So you just keep drawing, right? Just draw, 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 all right. And then later on, you try to make connections. One cup costs two dollar more. All right, so one cup costs two dollar more. So let's put down one cup, one plate, two dollar more than one plate. Okay, and you can see that when I draw, right, the labels are in the correct order: plates on top and the cups below. 
One plate costs two dollar forty cents. Ah, can make connection already. <laughs> one plate costs two dollar forty cents. That is your first connection, and then one cup will be four dollar forty cents, right? How many cups did Emily buy? So where should we put the question mark? So your question mark is actually here. Oh, we forgot to put the two more plates than cups. All right. And what was the total cost of the plates? So your question mark is here. Okay, total cost of the plates. Okay, then what do we do? All right, the model is actually done already. All right, and uh, then you try to make connections. If you put all the numbers there already, uh, right, all the numbers are all put in. Uh, actually, there is no connections. Right? When do you make connections? You make connections when you find that there's some numbers that you can't put into the model. But if you have put all the numbers already, where you put the word two, right? You put the word. Twenty-five dollar twenty cent, right? All these are in your model. Two dollar more in your model. Two dollar forty cent also in your model. Everything is on your model. Then you don't actually have to make connections because everything is on your model. You make connections when there are some numbers that you can't put in the model. Then you look at the model and connect with the numbers that you can't put. You understand? All right. So over here, I have put everything inside. So I look at the model and I think. Hmm. So what do I do now? There was a lesson that I taught some time ago on grouping, right? How to when do I use grouping? When I don't know when there are two kinds of items and I don't know how many of each type, then I will think of grouping, right? I don't know how many plates, I don't know how many cups, so I can use assumption, or I can use grouping. But in this problem, I can't use assumption because I don't have the total number of cups and plates. Neither do I know the total cost. To do assumption, you must have two totals. So if I can't use assumption, then the next alternative is grouping. Then how do I use grouping? Then I can see that there are two more plates than cups. So can I make one group with equal number by by what? By taking out the two plates. So if I take out the two plates, right? Take out the two plates. I will have equal number of plates and cups. And you make one group with equal number of plates and cups, right? So when you take out two plates, how much is two plates? One plate is two dollar forty cents, and you times two, and you get four dollar eighty cent. So you look at your second model, right? If you take out two plates, right? So let's take out two plates. Then what happened to the money? What happened to the cost of the plates? It will become four dollar eighty cent lesser. Am I correct? It will become four dollar eighty cent lesser. So what is the what is the total cost? What is the cost of all the plates now? You take out two plates, then this will be the remaining cost of the plates. Am I correct? The remaining cost of the plates, and the cups will still be the same, same total cost, right? Same 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 cost, same money. Uh, but when you take out two plates, what happened? You have equal number of plates and cups. Am I correct? So if you have equal number of plates and cups. Then you look at the next model. Do you see the equal number of plates and cups, which is one plate and one cup? All right. Can you see the difference? Right. So one cup is two dollar more. Right. One cup is two dollar more than one plate. Then how about here? If you look at the middle model, right? Look at the model in the middle. You take out two plates. Then how much is the all the cups? Then all the plates, which is equal number. So how much is how much is okay? Let me just put over here. How much is the difference? How much more? How much more is all the cups than all the plates, which are equal number? So isn't that twenty-five dollar twenty cents, and plus four dollar eighty cents, and what do you get? You will get thirty dollars. So you have thirty dollars more. So which means that all the cups cost. Thirty dollars more than all the plates, which are equal number. Okay, why equal number? Because you took out two plates to make equal number, right? Okay, so these thirty dollars more, we don't know how many groups there are, but we know that one group you have equal number, right? One group you have one plate, one cup. So how many groups make up thirty dollars more? So if one group is two dollars more, right? This is your one group. Right, one group has equal number, one plate, one cup. Then how many groups make up thirty dollars more? So you take thirty dollars and you divide by 
one group two dollars more so you will get 15 groups right 15 groups so if you are 15 groups then how many plates and how many cups now one group okay one group has one plate and one cup so if there are 15 groups inside the the red boxes right so which means that there must be <coughs> 15 right 15 cups and 15 plates right 15 cups and 15 plates okay so 15 cups and 15 plates which is now equal number already uh, but of course you must put back the two more right so how many plates are there there are 17 plates okay correct <laughs> okay all right now so what have we found already uh, we found part A. How many cups did Emily buy? Emily bought 15 cups. And then what's the total cost of the plates? Now the total cost of the plates will be 17 plates and you multiply by how much is one plate which is $2.40. So $2.40 and you times 17. So all the plate costs $40.80. All right, agree. All right, so and you solve the problem easily, All right? So seventeen plates will be seventeen times uh, two dollar forty cents, okay? And that's how you solve the problem. <laughs> All right. So what's the lesson here? Now the lesson here is you draw out the model as much as you can, All right? If you need to draw three kinds of model, then you draw three kinds of model, and then you try to make connections. When do you make connections? When there are numbers that you can't put onto your model. Then you try to connect the model with whatever numbers that you are unable to put on the model, right? Uh, otherwise, if you have put everything inside the model already, there is no need to make any connection. You just look at the model and then you think about how to use the model to solve. So in this uh, problem, what did we use to solve? Grouping. Right, and how, when do I use grouping? I use grouping when there are two kinds of things and you don't know how many of each kind. It can be also more than two types, right? Uh, it can be two types or even three types or even four types. You can do grouping, all right? And uh, how to do grouping? You take out the excess, take out the two more, right? You, are, you can see there are two more plates, right? Take out the two more plates and then you have equal number of plates and cups. And you make one group with equal number. That's why you have one group that is one plate and one cup. Then you find how many groups make up $30 more, which is over here. All right, how many groups make up $30 more? So you take out the two plates and then you have equal number and then you can make one group already. So that is the, uh, that is the method, right? Model drawing with grouping. So in some problems, you, you can see that uh, just one method alone is not enough. You may need to use another method with like model with grouping together. All right, so we come to the end of the uh, online lesson on uh, creative model drawing. So stay tuned to the next drawing lesson uh, and uh, you will see more drawing lessons. All right, and the questions are also very tough, uh, very hard, but don't worry. Uh, at the end of all the lessons, the objective is to, is to be able to break down the problem by drawing out your own personal model. And then once you can do that, then you, you, are, they, you are competent. You should be able to, to uh, get some marks right, from all the, most of the problems that you are going to see in your exams. All right? Okay, so stay tuned for the next lesson.